I dreamt last night the moon was so bright it melted the walls away and it wasn't alarming when I saw Prince Charming come into my bedroom and say let me persuade you to come to the place where tomorrow meets today Ooh. If you were a scientist, you were in. Your excellent science, I'm your faithful servant. Building a new world. Thirty-five years ago, one man set out to turn this country into a modern industrial utopia. He was Kwame Nkrumah, the first leader of a newly independent black African state. His aim was to transform Ghana into a society shaped and driven by the power of science. And I see and hear bringing up cities of Ghana, becoming the metropolis of science, learning, scientific agriculture and philosophy. Seek ye first the political kingdom, and all other things shall be added unto it. At the heart of Nkrumah's plan was a giant dam that would produce vast quantities of cheap electricity. Enough power to build a modern industrial state in the heart of Africa within a generation. But what Nkrumah did not foresee was that with the dam would come other, more dangerous forms of power which he could not control. Political and economic forces that would tear apart his vision of using science and technology to create a model for the new Africa. Nkrumah it was, in my mind, a visionary, not a dreamer. In his mind's eye, he could see the uh, United States of Africa as the United States of America. And he could see Africa coming together to form a viable unit uh, to become a, a world power in the shortest possible time. From now on, there is a new African in the world. He needed power and there was no source from which he could get the amount of power which he needed. And this was the one source which could provide him with that power. And he was prepared to go the whole length to get it. We begin in West Africa one of the two great areas of the world where we have ruled but never settled. To the people of the Gold Coast, there came last week a day that will always be remembered in their history. For here, in what's been a British colony for more than a century, nearly a million people went to the polls in their first general election. The main issue in the election lay between those who want self-government sometime in the future and those who want it now, like the Convention People's Party, the CPP. Their leader, Kwame Nkrumah, spent election day in jail, serving a sentence for incitement and sedition. Nkrumah's rise had been irresistible. After spending 10 years in America as a student, he had returned to the Gold Coast in 1947. Within two years, he had formed a political party. Two years after that, he swept to power. Although the British still controlled trade, defence and foreign policy, he had become the first black African prime minister. Nkrumah, before coming into power, has, in his election manifesto, had made certain promises about uh, development, about turning the country into a modern industrial country. Nkrumah very much believed that for development, power was necessary, that you had to have power, that without power, you couldn't develop. 
power meant electricity, and the source was to be the giant Volta River that flowed through the eastern half of the country. Ever since the 1920s, the British had planned to build a dam there. A hydroelectric plant would produce electricity to make aluminium from the Gold Coast's vast reserves of the mineral bauxite. In the early 50s, Britain was desperate for a cheap source of aluminium, and Krumer joined with the British to resuscitate the scheme. This is the Volta, the greatest natural resource of the Gold Coast, whose latent power is the mainspring of the most visionary development project in the whole of Africa. And this is bauxite, which lies in millions of tons beneath the green forested hills of the Gold Coast. From this red earth, man can extract the shining wonder metal of today, aluminium. And that is the aim of the Gold Coast, to cap the march to independence with a dramatic leap into the age of technology. The British authorities saw the power from the dam simply as a means to boost the empire's supply of aluminium. But for Nkrumah, it was much more. He saw it as the key to fulfilling his country's destiny. The power was originally conceived just for the manufacture of aluminium in this country. But then when Kwame came, he gave a new uh, accent, a new importance to that power project. That was the power was to be used for a comprehensive economic development of the country. <laughs> Together, Nkrumah and the British organized a traveling exhibition to promote the Volta scheme. Large models of the dam were built and taken round the country amidst a blaze of publicity. The exhibition was seen by nearly two million people. Some elderly folks, their reaction was first, is it possible, is it feasible for this to happen in their lifetime? And I remember in one particular place, there was one farmer who came in in the cloth and did ask the question, what can he do to help for the project to come on? The two mobile cinemas ranged the country ahead, showing films to audiences large and small, wherever they could find them. Showing how great rivers can create prosperity for the people who live beside them. The exhibition was a great success, and it helped Nkrumah consolidate his political position. But to his opponents, whom he had defeated in the election, the Volta scheme was a dangerous trap, just another cycle in the British exploitation of their country. The British people were anxious to give us that scheme. And one thing I must make clear, the scheme was not started by Nkrumah. The Volta River scheme was an old scheme of a British government. In 1953, Nkrumah's opponents forced a debate in Parliament. In a series of speeches, the opposition MPs warned that Nkrumah was in danger of enslaving the country to powerful interests far beyond his control. As a long-term scheme, it is excellent. But as a short-term scheme, Mr Speaker, it is suicidal. I would say that no nation which is beginning to free itself puts its neck in a position in which it will find itself in economic slavery. At the end of the debate, Nkrumah defended his partnership with the British. We are not boys, he said. Do you think I am a fool to enter into a project like this blindly? I am not so damn silly as to put my nose into something that is detrimental to this country. All my life, I've been a man of peace, working for peace, striving for peace, negotiating for peace. But I'm utterly convinced that the action we have taken is right. In 1956, Britain invaded Egypt to prevent President Nasser from nationalizing the Suez Canal. Within 10 days, the United Nations and the Americans forced them to retreat. Suez symbolised the decline of Britain's colonial power. Vast projects like the Volta Dam began to look increasingly insecure in the face of confident new African leaders. And Britain was running out of money. That same year, Nkrumah's government was told the Volta scheme was shelved. Nkrumah had received the news that the British government uh, intended to pull out of the scheme because uh, 
the finances were getting too large.